I was last time in the middle of uh, trying to answer Tejashwini's question. Uh, I will just uh, start from there. Um, so Tejashwini asked, uh, having worked on driver firmware and not uh, familiar with embedded Linux, how to approach the knowledge gap? Uh, right, Tejashwini, I will assume this is the correct understanding of the question. Um, however, I would try to assure you that it is not a, a, a big knowledge gap first to start with. So whenever you are learning something new, when you are touching something new, we always have this feeling of, I don't know this. And uh, in real life, in, in interview situations also, sometimes the interviewer will try to see how you deal with uh, such knowledge gaps. You know, how do you actually equip yourself with the knowledge gap? So it's not just uh, during this uh, learning period, but also in an interview situation also, you may uh, have to answer. So nobody will ask you explicitly, but uh, the conversation may sometimes go towards that. So the, the best positive way to handle that is to start with knowing what do I already know? So when you know something, how do I um, already know? And how do I leverage it? Or actually not um, say, okay, uh, that will reduce the knowledge gap, right? How do I leverage what I already know? Okay, so let's say you are asked to write a driver uh, for embedded Linux for a device in, in the embedded Linux environment. The first thing you need to think is that there are two parts to the uh, device driver uh, writing, right? And I'm sure the first part you would be very familiar. The part one is all about the hardware. It's register interface. It's functionality, of course, it's uh, peculiarities. It's register interface and uh, anything that it's uh, control status and uh, of course the data, these are the register interfaces. So you would be familiar with that irrespective, this is irrespective of the uh, platform, right? And uh, you would basically uh, that, and then there may be a protocol involved in the hardware. So the protocol, it could be any uh, device, it may be I2C or it may be SPI, it may be a USB, whatever it is, Bluetooth, they have their own protocols, right? And uh, much of the device driver actually splits, some part of the protocol is uh, done in hardware and some part is done in the firmware. So essentially, this is what matters. The operating system comes next. So that, so what is the part two? So this part is same, whatever, uh, you know, new platform you have to do. If you know already this part, you are at least 50% uh, ready. The second part is what is the role of the operating? So you may be working on a bare metal scenario or you may, work, you may have worked on an Altos and then now you are asked to write or embedded Linux. Let's see what is common between this. So basically the role of this part two is to structure the driver, okay? So that it is compliant with the, the OS and it, it's finally, it has to provide an interface to the, to the application. So basically that is the goal. And this is where they differ in a bare metal, the application is not very different from the, the driver. They're all you know, in one bundle. In Autos, they are structured. So bare, in bare metal, what happens is you would have the ISO plus whatever the foreground logic, foreground loop, uh, loop will call a function, foreground function for the driver logic, right? If you see in the Autos, you will still have the ISO and you will have a driver task, maybe more than one task. So what are you doing? You are doing some time critical things here and you are doing more, uh, bulk, uh, what do you call, um, more extended logic, uh, driver logic in the task context. Um, so this is how you are structuring. And of course the driver task will interface to application task. So then, so the partitioning between application and driver is through the 
task mechanism there. So the inter-task communication or IPC mechanisms come into play, the synchronization and then whatever the, the mailboxes, all those things come here. And the ISR to the driver, again, uh, some of the uh, mailbox kind of things will be there or condition flags will be there. So all those things between the ISR and driver, driver to Aptos is specific. So while it, the API may be specific to an Autos, but this is a general structure in an Autos. So this is the Autos structure. Now let's look at what happens in, in a Linux case. What is different in a Linux case is that Linux is a monolithic kernel and then the kernel space is different from app space. So basically you still have a, an ISR and you may have kernel threads. So these two are in the kernel space or at least in the system space. And you would have app space, application uh, user space. So this is what the new thing. So there is no such concept in the RTOS, whereas this is the new thing in embedded Linux, right? Or for that matter, any Linux. So in fact, I'm assuming you know about Linux, uh, but you think you may be wondering what is special about embedded Linux. In case you don't know about Linux per se, Linux device driver, uh, you can actually read up. Uh, I would say it is almost common uh, between embedded Linux and this. So these O'Reilly books are there, right? Um, the nutshell book, right? Linux driver in, in a nutshell. So I strongly recommend you read this, okay? It may have more than what you want, but it is the, the best book uh, I have seen for learning about device driver in a uh, embedded Linux part. So when you talk about embedded Linux knowledge, what, what exactly is different from normal Linux and embedded Linux? So simple things, it's basically a kind of, uh, you know, configured for embedded devices, right? The kernel is, the kernel is configured for embedded devices. What does it mean? So you, you don't have a hard disk, you don't have, uh, basically persistent storage is, mostly flash or such uh, such devices. So it will be configured to fit in that. It will also be working on uh, low RAM configurations. So it might, for example, this, the swap area may be less <clears throat> because you want to conserve the flash, the low, everything that you configure in the kernel, uh, basically for memory will be configured for low RAM situations. So basically that is the main thing. Of course, there are, you know, Unix kernel or Linux kernel is uh, one part. The kernel comes with a lot of services. So these services are, many of them can be configured. For example, do you need a network uh, interface? Do you need a, a web service, for example, web hosting? Uh, whatever. Um, many of those are printing, all those things are configurable. So you will not, you will strip them off. So that, that is a matter of configuration. So you don't have to worry about it, but from a, how to write a device driver in embedded Linux, it is pretty much, um, um, you know, straight, same as uh, normal Linux. Okay. So basically the driver, um, what you would do is, um, what do you need to know knowledge gap wise? Read that uh, O'Reilly book. There is another thing which may come handy, basically kernel uh, and uh, you know device driver uh, debugging. So this is a bit tricky. So you have to learn, know about, know about um, all the logs, about the sys logs, kernel logs. So this is one of the key things that you have to familiarize yourself with. Uh, what to look for what, what log will give you what information. Um, and in order to debug, how to enable some of those uh, things. So to summarize, basically know the driver structure. And then of course the, you know, there are ring buffers allocated, uh, 
um, the memory allocated in the kernel. Okay, how do I or configure it? How do I optimize it? What actu actually is allocated? How and things like that. So, does it uh, answer your question, Tejishri? <clears throat> Tejishri is she's dropped. Okay, I don't know what happened. I don't see her on the list. So, anybody has any comments? Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, Subhash. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I work on embedded Linux, so uh, I just wanted to. I mean, so if if you look at drivers, I mean, you you summarize very well, right? I mean, there is hardware. Uh, then I think the hardware, I mean, the driver that's written for, uh, bare metal or Artos environment. Probably the next seventy percent code will remain same even if you if you port it to Linux. The things that would change is the is how the driver would interact with the Linux kernel uh, framework. Like for example, how do you register ISR or how do you uh, schedule the bottom half, top half, or or how do you use timer services or if you want to use kernel threads, how do you use that? Otherwise, I think probably seventy percent of the functionality would be very similar to what what we would have on bare metal or uh, or the or the artos environment it's just the the adapting to the to the underlying os environment is is the difference which is probably 20 to 30 percent of the work yeah um, right. yeah, yeah so i don't know I, the intent of a question is is just that um, having to learn embedded linux itself uh, is a barrier, but uh, I think uh, once you, yeah, yeah, hard to work. Once you are given a device driver to do, you will look for information um, on, you know, how to register in Linux and so on. So it's not that that overwhelming as it looks initially. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, I I I, I had uh, I mean initially in my career I like initial two to probably three, four years, I wasn't, I was working mostly on bare metal or some some primitive Artos environment. And when I switched to embedded Linux, I just picked up those two books. Like one was the, the that you mentioned, Linux device drivers, uh, LDD book by and Aurelia, and the other one was Linux kernel development, which is by Robert Law. And right. uh, that gets you started. And I mean, uh, again, like 70 to 80% fundamentals are embedded software development still applies for the embedded Linux. It's just the, those 20% comes from those books or, or just the additional learning that you might need, but uh, yeah. yeah. So my own experience is that it can be a little frustrating if you're coming from bare metal to Linux because many of the things are hidden deep and uh, <clears throat> you also uh, you don't have the same level of feel of comfort, uh, control over the hardware that you would otherwise have in a bare metal. You can do anything you want. You can change the yeah. structure of it. So you will be constrained by the rules of uh, how to do things. You cannot, uh, you know, you have to switch modes uh, and, you know, all the memory, um, memory restrictions that um, will be imposed because you are crossing kernel boundaries and things like that. So. It, right. it may feel like restricting, but as you get familiar with it, you actually become more productive. And uh, you actually have to shed some of the bad habits of bare metal programming, uh, where we ignore safe security and overflows, whatnot. So basically, yeah. it's it's a more unlearning uh, rather than learning, I would somewhat say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the, I mean, that's very true. I mean, we, if you if you look at the bare metal, you know, okay, this is the sequence, right? I mean, A happens after B. Obviously, there are ISS and timers, but it's still more more predictable environment than Linux or or any high level OS where there are a lot of threads running in parallel processes running, but a sequence of operation may not be guaranteed. I mean, one one example I had, like, I mean, the there, I, I used to work with Qualcomm and we 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 you find hardware issues like where you're I was mostly doing Linux storage drivers and we see okay there is some issue. 
and it turns out to be a controller hard storage controller issue but then how do we give it to the hardware portal that okay this is the sequence of operation that we did in linux uh, that resulted into or that exploited that hardware bug so it but when there is there is always like there is a silicon validation team that also does the similar thing so we have to nail down exact sequence and then move it to the silicon validation team we they have a bare metal environment that just runs okay step one step two step three uh, but yeah i mean it, it's it's different it, it takes a lot of adaptation to uh, think uh, once you move from bare metal to high level OS, yeah.